Next, I want to put a couple of images in here. And I'm going to go ahead and put one right here at the beginning of the text. And there's a couple of ways to do that. I can drag and drop, or I can say insert image. Eventually, the dialog box will come up after the spinning beach ball. Here we go. And let's put our watch here. Uh, alternate text, that's for blind people using um, reader devices. And what I want to do is use my alignment here. I could do this with CSS, but it's just as easy to say align left. And then I think what I'm going to do is in front of this paragraph here, I'm going to say insert image, and we'll put our driftwood image there. Uh, we'll put in our alternate text, and then I'm going to hit OK, and I'm going to align that one to the right. So if I save this, let's preview it in the browser and check our progress. Some files need to be saved, yes, and I've got my browser off screen. So here we go. Now one thing we can see is that the type is crashing into the images, uh, especially the one on the left. So I want to add some margin around those images and um, some padding around those images. Let's go ahead and see what we can do to fix this. What we need is a style for the image tag because the code is here. If I click on this, you can see where it says image source equals watch.jpg, but I want to be able to um, put a border around this. Let's create a new CSS rule in styles, and it's going to be for the tag. Um, it's actually going to be for um, the occurrence of that tag inside the page. So I have a compound tag. Anywhere I'm in the page div and you see an image tag, you can apply this style to the images. Tags must start with an alphabetical character. OK. Um, let's see. Compound container. Let's do it like this. Ah, because my image is in the body text. Let's see if it allows this. There we go. OK. I'm going to put a border on these images. And I think what I'm going to do is choose a nice green border from my picture. I want to use a six pixel border. Uh, actually, this should say solid. Six pixels. And let's apply it. And you can see it's rendering funny, but it should be working here in in my scene. Now the other thing I want to do is keep uh, type away a certain number of pixels. So I'm going to go to my box and I'm going to set a margin of let's say six pixels all around. Let's hit OK and my text, let's save this. So you'll notice I've got my page div, anywhere we have the IMG tag, it's specifying a border and a margin. And just to keep this organized, I'm going to go ahead. My page itself doesn't have any instructions right now, but I've got this. Let's preview this in Firefox, in the browser, whichever browser you use. And you can see that my type is staying at least six pixels away. It's wrapping around, and I've got a nice green border. Uh, I've got heads and subheads and quotation text. The last thing we need to do is to add some navigation and some other pages. So let's close some of these old versions up because I keep testing this. Move this out of the way. And the navigation is actually pretty easy. I'm going to create three sample pages. And I'm going to just type home. Oops, wrong place. If you can't get to them directly, we know that these are going to be in the nav bar. So I'm going to type home, space, about, space, and products. Just some sample pages. And save. And when I refresh this, they should appear. I don't know if you can see them on the video. They're just three unformatted links. Now, I'm going to double click the home page. And I'm going to link that to 
index.html, which is the home page, please not home.html. Uh, about, we haven't created the page yet, but we're going to link that to a page that we will create, which we'll call about.html. And products, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to link to products.html, and those are our three links. Now, how do we get these links to look better than these blue default text links against the black? What we want to do is inside the navbar div, a tags are going to be rendered a certain way. Anytime there's a link, it's going to show up a certain way. So let's go ahead. What we need to do is create a new um, new one for navbar A. It says container navbar A, but everything's in the container, so we really don't need to worry about it. Um, there's a less specific and more specific button you can click to adjust that also. And let's hit OK. And let's choose um, for Donna. Let's choose um, 22. And let's choose no decoration, which will get rid of the underline here. And we're going to make these a nice light creamy color. And the font weight will be bold. And if I apply this, you can already see, uh, I'm going to come down in size a little bit to about 18. Uh, and these are a little bit close together. And I can do this the same way I did before. I'm going to go to my box. And what I want is a left margin of, let's say, 20 pixels on each one of these. And I get nice button spacing. Matter of fact, I think what I'm going to do is put 10 on the left. And that's fine. Now I also want, um, let's get some padding on the top, three pixels, and that's fine, I think. Maybe even more, five. Doesn't seem to be moving around. Okay, I'm good with it. So we've got our links, and they're going to work. The last thing I want to do is create a hover state for those links. So that's really easy. You'll see that I have on my style sheet, let me move this out of the way. Here's navbar A. I'm going to say copy, paste, and what I want is navbar A colon hover. Hover is just the rollover state. I'm going to keep everything exactly the same. Uh, let's save this on the style sheet, except that we'll refresh this. And as I scroll down, I'm going to do this here where I can use the color picker. And instead of that, I'm going to go to... Um, why don't we use some sort of a red color to match our nav bar while we're making a hideous site? Here it is. OK. Save. Now you won't be able to preview that here. You don't see that hover effect. But if I preview, here I'm loading in Safari instead of Firefox. No big deal. Here we go. And you'll see when I roll over that I've got the rollover buttons working and everything's happening. So my links are in place. The last thing that I want to do here is add a little CSS3 trick because I'd like to add some transparency to my container because it's very stark white against this background. And the way to do that is let's go to the container div. The background color is going to be read by older browsers and that's fine. What we're going to do, to do is use just a background tag and I'm going to say background colon and I'm going to say RGBA, which stands for red, green, blue, and alpha, which is transparency. Instead of using the hex codes, I'm going to use 255, 255, 255, which is white. And then I'm going to specify a value between 0 and 1 for my transparency. So let's hit save. And you'll notice that nothing changes over on this side because Dreamweaver won't display the transparency. But go back into Firefox here and you may need to hit shift return and now you can see that the text is moving up and down the last thing I need to do here is simply make the other pages and that's easy because my links are done everything's done I'm gonna hit save as oops I'm saving the wrong one I want to be in my source code save as about.html 
And then I want to say save as products.html. And just so we have some minor changes on the page, I'm not going to bother to change text and images, but I will change the titles. Products. There's the products page. And then this is going to be about. Save that. And then in the headline, we're going to make this about. Now when I go to the index page one more time, I'll just preview this in my browser. Here is the home page. Let me put the whole experience in the video window for you. So we've got this. And then if I click the about page, you can see that the page changed. And if I click the products page, home about products, and I have a working website done in CSS.